Disclaimer, this video will cover serious and potentially triggering topics. Either run away or ensure... I don't know. Sometime when I was in uni, it came to my attention that somebody was probably following me. He just kept showing up constantly around where I was, to the point where I was questioning whether we were soulmates or primates, because you know, this isn't normal human behavior. To be fair, the guy had heavily hinted that he was kind of interested, and I brushed it off, which, you know, maybe I shouldn't have, but I thought that he knew that I had a crush on one of my mutual acquaintances at the time. So yeah, I brushed it off, and the hints and the appearances that I, I I want to say but you know uh, it didn't really make me seem him any better similarly toxic relationships in fiction are often seen badly and yet both he and the writers just keep romanticizing them in their heads I don't know what's going on with that so I got curious as I usually do I wanted to know why the toxic relationships trope even though it's very complicated I don't even know if I could call it one trope but you know toxic relationships as a concept why is that so prevalent in fiction if a lot of people do not enjoy it and think that it can be a very damaging representation of real life dangers and struggles and things like that and so here I am to tell you what I found I want to tell you what a toxic relationship trope is I want to tell you where it's seen who's kind of writing it then I want to tell you the disadvantages of this trope and then also even explore like the advantages of this trope because you know who knows maybe there's a positive aspect of having it in your fiction and if you have time read Abony's army you know abony has been calling me up she's been like hey why are they not reading yeah it's so you know I don't want her to hurt me so if you could if you could do me that favor that flavor then yeah I'd appreciate it. so what is a toxic relationship because this is very serious it's very issue these very real issues even though you know they're talking about it in fiction so it's not really serious because they're just characters constructed you know by different people according to dr john delany on ramsey solutions a toxic relationship could be defined as a relationship that has unhealthy dynamics and causes you distress or harm because you're unsupported manipulated or disrespected while we all have our moments and seasons of selfishness a truly toxic person will take Take and take and take and give you nothing in return. I preach. But I feel like we need to know more. You know, we can't just take from one definition. It says before, it's been a hundred times. We have to keep going. And especially because we're focusing more on fiction and this definition is talking more on the person, the individuals themselves. We need to have a way of understanding it as a whole, right? And so I went to Urban Dictionary to find a nuanced kind of understanding of what toxic relationship is to hopefully cater it more towards fiction and and the trope itself, you know? So Urban Dictionary focused on the relationship a bit better than the very well mind definition did. Simply put, a toxic relationship according to them is a relationship between two or more people who are constantly fighting or on thin ice with each other but are trying to maintain the relationship. So it focuses on the fighting element of it, which is interesting because the first one was talking about how it was very one-sided, whereas Urban Dictionary is talking about how it can be two-sided. You know, there's two people who are fighting there are people trying to maintain a relationship and it's kind of a different point of view of what a lot of people may consider a toxic relationship as well. Hey, it's come to the point of the video where I'm gonna talk about psychology because I need to, you know, flex and show that I actually understand psychological studies because what else did I get my degree for? And in this study that I found quite interesting, they mentioned toxic relationships but also as a holistic thing so if the first definition is talking about a person so a toxic relationship in that case is supposed to hurt the protagonist i guess the second one is talking about a relationship that's supposed to be maintained so maybe a romance maybe a, a marriage and then this last one talks about toxic relationships from the outside in which is quite interesting. So Shosha in 2023 ran a psychological experiment and found in Egypt, a country with a powerful patriarchal structure, narcissistic relationships are a common type of toxic relationship. And these relationships with narcissists were detrimental to the psychological and social well-being of the women. So they focused more on the first definition, I suppose, one-sided, and also on gender because of the patriarchal culture in Egypt specifically but of course we know and we've seen in fiction in real life toxic relationships can happen either way so yes I think these three definitions kind of cover 
how you can see a toxic relationship and they informed my definition of a toxic relationship so are you ready you ready you ready you ready i don't know if this is the most boring part of the video or the most interesting part but i, I always try this my best to like get a good definition going okay you ready you ready you ready you ready you ready five, five four, four three, three two, two. One. Okay, so my definition of a toxic relationship is this. A toxic relationship, or trope, I suppose, is an unbalanced, fictional relationship detrimental to at least one of the participants' emotional, physical, psychological, and or social well-being. Typically, one party is being distressed and manipulated while the other party is the aggressor. That's kind of the consensus I saw from these definitions. However, of course, a toxic relationship can be damaging on both sides, but supposedly, usually you see it be a one-sided affair, right? That's my definition. Okay, so if I wanted to give you some quick fire examples, just quick, 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 quick fire. Anime for all my weaves out there, Light and Misa. For those who go on Webtoon and they like manhwas and stuff, maybe trash belongs in the trash can. You know, they, they have a toxic relationship. Uh, I, with Light and Misa, it's like one-sided, but with Trash Belongs in the Trash Can, it's kind of like two-sided in a way. For cartoons, it's Homer and Marge. You know, he makes a lot of mistakes. He's manipulative in a way. Comics, it's Joker and Harley Quinn. I don't need to explain that to you. Don't cosplay as them at Comic-Con, please, for the love of God. And then a disclaimer. Uh, one last thing I wanted to say before we get into the where, the who, the positives, negatives, you know, that kind of thing. The Sundere, which is a character who is, uh, okay, insert the definition. I don't, I can't think of the definition off the top of my head. Sundere is a Japanese term for a character development process that depicts a character with an initially harsh personality who gradually reveals a warmer friendlier side over time a sundere is both an aggressor and not an aggressor so we see them often like beat the protagonist and stuff and often be in a re toxic relationship be the aggressor in a toxic relationship however because it is anime we must question whether this is actually happening right or whether this must be a representation of anger or frustration right because obviously it is happening on the screen but so is the protagonist thinking and fantasizing about i don't know aliens in the sky or something crazy that's fantasized and it's coming on screen and it's being shown and then it just disappears because it was all an imagination you know the same question goes and especially because sometimes when the sundere hits they get like a wound on one screen and then all of a sudden it disappears right so the question is is a sundere who is aggressive and actually hitting the protagonist or a character are they in a toxic relationship or is that like a representation of a toxic relationship it's complex and so i'm gonna talk about sundere's in another video because that is a quite a complicated i guess philosophical you, you let me know what you think uh but yeah the next part of this video is pretty simple where are toxic relationships seen like what types of stories and who is writing them well first where are toxic relationships mostly seen between you and your phone you turn it on when you want where you want at any moment time it's rude it's not asking for consent and it is toxic you should be going to jail another place where you see a toxic relationship is with divorced parents so you know the character might have uh two parents who are divorced and they usually had some kind of wrong relationship typically i feel like it's more of the mutual kind you know where they're both bickering and fighting it's not necessarily gonna have uh the dad beating on the mum or the mum beating on the dad you know it's usually just an argument but sometimes it can be that that's a very typical situation where you'll see a toxic relationship be put on the forefront of the screen this could happen in dramas romances fantasies whatever but in romances specifically there are a certain few breeds of toxic relationships that are exclusive to this genre right so we start with school sweethearts with no boundaries i don't know how it feels to date at school i was i mean i wasn't a loser but i was listen i was binging anime at time i was working studying hard i was what you called a nerd who uh yeah so i don't i don't know what you guys were doing but according to anime <laughs> so you know the whole thing in anime where they stalk you they're like oh she's going on she's doing this or she's doing that let me like sneak behind her bush or something you know like let me check her panties or her drawers and stuff you know let me ask her deep questions for no reason you know i'm saying he, her but it can be he as well let me invade his privacy with his friends by looking at his phone you know stuff like that right all of these kind of high school and i'm saying high school because you guys are um, everyone else uses high school are you wanted to stay secondary school but no one would understand then there's the supernatural creatures who have no boundaries as well but the excuse is always but they're not human 
but they're not human. The reason they stalked me and walked me all the way home and stiffed my, my underwear and stayed in my room is because they're not human. It's like, bro, why are you reading his mind for when he's unconscious? But she's not human, they're not human. You're not Batman. There ain't no reason for you to be sneaking up on people like that. And also, why do you want her blood for my guy like you better not be touching her used pads and then the third one i wanted to bring up was the uni or workplace romance that you'll see in manhwa's k-dramas movies that have still school maturity but it's more serious in a more serious adult situation you know new fiction kind of esque stuff that i see or i have seen so you know he's he's, he's calling me every five minutes at this work party because he trusts me you know he's waiting outside staring at that at every single person who I could potentially be attracted to with a glare because he loves me you know he's beating up people in the uni dorm party and telling me that nobody will ever love me as much as he does because he loves me you know stuff like that you know she's going up to all the girls who have ever spoken to me on co on, on campus and telling them that they should just you know because she loves me yeah it's like the same like it's school but just more serious and more implications and police can be called. These three types of relationships can easily be toxic is what I'm trying to say. And then who is writing these kind of relationships? Who wants the toxic relationship to be written and to be romanticized in a way that is kind of annoying, you know, it's like why are you writing them to be toxic and also saying that they're fine because they're not fine, like challenge them. If you're gonna write them, challenge them, you know what I mean? Well, for one, they're probably conservative, you know, conservative people from conservative houses, conservative minds, they think think the traditional and traditional is subjective but you know the woman should tend to the man and the man should value the woman and like th these kind of really rigid ideals that they want to emulate or they are even unconsciously emulating in their stories this is the reason why they're doing it basically these are the people doing that and then i think another really prominent kind of writer or creator who makes these toxic relationships is just innocent people who don't understand the difference between fiction and reality and again i am not someone to talk about this i've, I've not got much experience i don't know anything i don't know anything but i do know that those toxic relationships are not healthy and if you're writing them like that that means that you are probably being a bit corrupted i think by things that you've been consuming and so they kind of push that back out in an innocent or, or malicious way or you know and there's always at the end of the day with all these videos sometimes it can just be down to kinks dude <laughs> sometimes is just people are just a bit horny since this trope is more so romanticizing toxic relationships and leaving them untreated it's a bit different from just a toxic relationship right so what are the disadvantages of having that in your story we need to know that and the first disadvantage that i can think of it shows that soulmates matter and that soulmates are the most important thing ever so using the example from before joker and harley quinn the, one of the most iconic examples of a toxic relationship joker is well known and written to be the one for harley quinn you know the one to ruin her life and give her histrionic personality disorder but in reality even if the one or the few exist you don't always have to date them just food for thought you, you, do, you don't always have to uh you, you don't always have to try and date them another reason why this trope is kind of bad and why romanticizing or having these toxic relationships which are not criticized within the fiction itself are bad is because it kind of romanticizes the bad behavior in the victim you know the don't trust anyone kind of behavior that a toxic off it's let's say in in most cases you know there's one aggressor the aggressor puts onto the victim and it makes that behavior that the victim then adopts seem cool or like sweet or interesting and an example of this is nadrika from i fell into another harem game i think it's called let me read the full title it looks like i've fallen into the world of a reverse harem game so nadrika from that manhwa is a manhwa follows her like a puppy you know he doesn't trust anyone else he's got loyal to her to a fault and it's made to be cute since it's an isekai and the fact that he doesn't have anywhere to go leads her to try to help him a little bit so she makes him her concubine
Vine and you know she tries to change the situation a little bit little by little but it really doesn't help and it just kind of cements that their relationship is overly dependent it's unbalanced and it still damages his psychological well-being and yet they're trying to act like he's enjoying it and that this is all he wanted you know it's romanticizing this bad behavior that is developed from having a toxic relationship in the first place i'd honestly prefer if he was taken out of yeldria's domain out of that world into this world made into a plushie and put on a shelf with a flower clip in his hair i think that would be much more healing for me and for him please consider that creators i would buy a plushie and last but not least a disadvantage is that it romanticizes bad behavior in the aggressor if there is an aggressor in the fictional relationship because it doesn't treat it you know in a toxic relationship especially an established relationship there are things like stalking and cheating and and ab abuse and and even sa that happen that are not properly addressed or criticized within the story itself which can taint an otherwise wholesome relationship or it can be the beginning of the end you know so kai showa made summer is a great example it's a it's an old ish anime classic shoujo anime that my friends refuse to stop referencing because of the one time that i dressed up as a maid for comic con and they just talk her like i don't need to hear that every time i see you in person i'm begging you but you know so in that story not only did takumi stalk her not only did he blackmail misaki to get to know him and stuff no he also looked like he smelled like doritos look at this pic right now look at this picture and tell me his breath doesn't stink of doritos exactly you can't and that's a crime okay the advantages of the toxic relationships well, what are they? I'm sure you're wondering, I'm sure you're wondering, how can having a toxic relationship in your story that doesn't really do much except from romanticize the relationship, how can that be a positive thing? How can it have a good impact on the story and be a nice thing to consume? Well, here I am to explain that to you right this moment now, yes. Sometimes it suggests to the viewers that soulmates don't matter. So for one, let's talk about The Legend of Korra. You know, I didn't really like it, but <laughs> in the first season there was a relationship Mako and Korra I mean I shipped them because I never watched more than the like first 20 episodes or something like that with my family but you know because their relationship was a bit toxic they were fighting too much apparently and they had a lot of issues with each other it showed that apparently screaming matches aren't good for you and no matter how much you like the person we all need some space apart we need to go somewhere else we need to go on other avenues with different people with someone nice someone kind someone a sami we, we need we we all need a sami it, it would be appreciated if we could all get an asami another advantage of having a toxic relationship that is kind of romanticized is that it shows real life in real life toxic relationships can be revealed and then they end and once they are ended a lot of the time the person in the relationship doesn't get back together with the other person or at least they're not happy with the other person they realize that they will be manipulated if if you know in this case there's an aggressor and there's a person who is receiving that aggression and then they don't actually like the other person they break it off that is a realistic outcome the same way it could be that they actually end up getting back together which is kind of awful to think about an example of this is speak of the devil it's a manhwa it's a bl it's really nice and really good not nice as in pleasant but really interesting is what i should say and so in you know once the aggressor is it's kind of mild spoilers but if you're gonna read it then don't listen once the aggressor realizes the other person's feelings and their confession he tries to redeem himself right he tries to kind of flip the tables he started to feel like oh i kind of like you now even though i was manipulating you before i kind of like you now but it doesn't work like he blackmails him in fact he goes he gets even worse than he was and he blackmails the guy who had a crush on him and had, had was really into him who now doesn't like him anymore because he's realized that he was kind of being toyed with in a way and now they're stuck in this weird limbo where the aggressor actually genuinely likes him and the guy who likes the aggressor now doesn't like the aggressor and he is kind of being blackmailed in a way to still be with the aggressor in a certain it's really odd and i think that even though you could argue someone could argue that this this relationship isn't really being challenged in the thing and so it is kind of romanticizing it i think it's really just an 
honest portrayal of the complexity of what a toxic relationship could look like with people who actually like each other and still want to figure things out but don't want to figure things out at different points of the story. I, I honestly really would recommend this story. And honestly, because you're not involved in the thing itself, it's better than any Am I the Asshole thread you'll ever read. A third advantage for having a toxic relationship is that it's, you know, spicy. It's, it's, it's that kind of flavor that you might not get anywhere else it's forbidden you know killing stalking for instance another bl an iconic bl it's so forbidden it's banned in canada okay like and last but not least it adds tension you know it adds tension to the story that cannot be achieved with a normal healthy relationship you wouldn't have that much tension in a normal relationship there wouldn't be so much fighting there wouldn't be so much questions there wouldn't be so much aggression in a normal healthy relationship so an example of this is something that comes out of left field uh i wanted to end on a on a on a fun note you know on a on a real note that is that toxic relationships are not just romantic i know in my definition i focus on romantic more so than anything and most definitions do but toxic relationships can be platonic as well and so a good example of a toxic relationship that i think is very interesting and that adds a lot of attention to the story it's crucial to the story and it's in a good good way is the relationship between Asgard and Thorfinn in Vinland Saga. This is, don't worry, no spoilers at all, okay? Vinland Saga had a plethora of toxic relationships, but the one between Askeladd and Thorfinn really got us on the edge of our seas. You know, we always wondered when Askeladd was gonna finally body this kid and become the MC that we all deserve. You know, I, that's really a good idea, actually. I hope someone wrote that on AO3. Wait, let me. And there you have it. Toxic relationships are so common. They're a really common trope because, because they are a guilty. Guilty, guilty pleasure. If you like this video, then subscribe. If you want to see more videos, then watch the No Bad Tropes playlist. Uh, recommend these things. And then I say okay, goodbye. Janne, Annyeong, Annyeong.